Since I've long finished my preparations for tomorrow's long-awaited birthday, I'll try to get the opinion of my resident detective. I'll drop by her room straight after dinner. Sorry, I only have tea to offer you. She brings over a pot of a fragrant amber liquid. Thank you, Rikisan. Hands over to her Nancy Drew of steaming cup. You prefer coffee, don't you, Yatsuro Senpai? I like tea from time to time, too. And your tea is a special case, Hanabi Shikun. This is a salmon, right? It's, it's I have some cookies too if you'd like. I'd love one. Take a bite of Hanabishi San's homemade almond cookie. Ooh, that sounds lovely. It's nice and crunchy. The sliced almond perfectly complements your aromatic tea. Almond cookie, I wonder if it's a um, macaroon. That's the best type of almond cookie for acne. Not a macaron, not with French ones. But a macaroon. Macarons are generally made with al with um, coconut, I believe. Whereas macarons are made with almond. Macaroons are made with almond. And egg whites are very egg whites. Look at recipes. They're beautiful, delicious cookies if you haven't ever had one. Anyway, I'll get distracted. Lure of macaroons. So I'm assuming what you wanted to discuss with Sura San concerns a ghost? The shapeshifter? Yeah. So you've heard about it too? Yes, as a class president, I have to know what's going on amongst the students. She glances at nervously at Surakun. Guess I don't have to ask her for the sources. So you should be ready. For, you should you should all be aware of the events that led up to the discovery of Surabaki Kun last night. Both nod. Take a sip of Darjeeling, or was it Orange Peko? When asking them for their thoughts on the incident. Our thoughts? Do you think it was really a supernatural occurrence, like the victim says? Real shapeshifter? Let's hear your opinion first, Hannah Michigan. I don't believe in ghosts. So you think it was someone playing a prank or something? No, I don't think that's it. Ghosts don't exist, but perhaps it really did look like that to Tsubaki kun. I see. So you're in real this camp. Huh? She gives me a blank look which turns increasingly dubious as she feels her braids. What do you think, Yatsuro Senpai? Turns the question around. The door to the textiles room was locked, wasn't it? Yes. The door can be locked or unlocked from the inside, but only requires a key from the outside to create the situation. So a buki can have to be unconscious. Is the door could be unlocked from the inside? Right. Give me approximate time for a school nurse to think so a buki can passed out from the shock of seeing herself. And when Sura could arrive with a dull mother. Would it be impossible for someone to borrow a key from the dull mother's room? Scare her? Let me get it back. So she must have imagined. Let's not jump to conclusions yet. You never know, maybe some of our students are done not talking. Said as a joke, but both Hanabishi Kun and Surikun's expressions remain earnest. Let them know I'm not serious. I go on to stress how unlikely it is that anyone of that sort should find themselves at a boarding school for modest young ladies. Plus, there's one more complicating factor. It's my fault for not asking before, but it seems a ripped dress didn't actually belong to Surabuki Kun. Really? Where would you go to Saki had known about it? it? Seems that that part is in common knowledge, or. Yes, I learned that later on too. No, Richie Gukun wasn't mistaken. After I finished my summary of events, silence descends. For a while, I just enjoy a pleasant quiet and me regretting a room of a tea, sunk in thought. And Suricun had been sitting still as a hibernating squirrel, she listened to my intently to my story. Speaks. So, what do you think of this explanation? She begins. Perhaps the incident was a shapeshifter last night. It was a total accident. An accident? What do you mean? Perhaps there was no culprit behind the incident. Could a victim also have also been the perpetrator? And now my eyes searching for a true meaning of my teacher's words. I mean, she has a very good point. 
I've watched enough Jonathan Creek to know what sort of story we got going on here. We got a locked room. There's no way in. The only way out is to unlock the door, which means it's no longer a locked room. There's no places to hide. Only one person in the room, which means the person did it to themselves. Something happened to them. We all assume the torn dress was done there. Maybe the desk dress was torn beforehand. Maybe she injured herself in the room and then fainted from the injury. Or fainted due to lack of sleep or worry. Something delirious caused her to view herself. Maybe it was just guilt there which did it. That was the thing which brought up early on in the, uh, in the game. That would mean the dress was accidentally torn by the victim. So, Bukikun? So, Bukikun tore it? But she was found on the inside a locked room. And Bukikun blinks confusedly and so explains to her there's actually nothing meaningful about the room having been locked. Usually, creating a locked room scenario means means of creating an alibi. But in this case, there isn't any deep significance to it. What do you mean? She'd simply locked her room from the inside as she worked because she felt guilty about being there. There's no intention of casting suspicion onto another student by locking the door. And maybe she could nod and her braid swaying. While she was grossing her work when the door was locked, she was startled by a shapeshifter by a vision of herself as she fainted. In a fright, she managed to hurt herself with her dressmaking shears. Freaking out her even more, she grabbed hold of her nose dress, tearing it as she fell. What do you make of that? Again, I'm not 100% convinced that is the order of events. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> that all makes sense. I see. If you acknowledge that she did in fact see a ghost, everything else falls into place. Let's show Senpai. Did you speak to Ibuki san? No. I really wanted to hear her side of the story, so I've been gone over there a few times, but I haven't been able to catch her. She's probably still suffering from a shock of seeing a shapeshifter, but... I was also be upset about ruining her classmate's costume if it was an accident. Yeah. If I were in her shoes, I wouldn't be able to face them. The real question isn't, is she feeling bad for ruining her friend's dress? Why did she have a friend's dress? Because she wasn't working on her own costume, she was working on somebody else's costume in the dead of night. Why would she do that in the dead of night? Why would she feel, have to feel guilty about doing it? She filled her braids, an expression grave. We have to do something so she can make up for the girl whose dress she ripped. She not decisively to herself. Yes, Shiro Senpai. My teacher regards me questioningly. Thanks. Looks like I got a good news for Sister Basket. It'll make sense. Yet yeah, I still feel like something's not quite right. Take a sip out of my now cold tea and close my eyes trying to figure it out. Can't exactly describe it as a good situation. I guess it's not as bad as the one putting a poor prank. I muttered to myself as I flicked the light switch in the textiles room on and off. The real reason things still were well presented yesterday. It probably provides the best compromise as an explanation to present to Sister Basket, who's recommended cancelling the Halloween party. It's neither good nor bad, it's neutral. She was obviously scared and that caused her to see herself freak out, hurt herself and destroy her classmate's costume. As accidents go, it's not too serious, it provides an excuse for a dress. However, something's bugging me. It's a coherent, logical explanation of events, so why do I feel like something's not quite right? I ran into a room and sit down for a chair from where a shapeshifter often said to be seen. I look around. Blackboard, curtains, mannequins, window. She says that she saw herself. If there's anywhere she catch her reflection, it would be the window. 
daytime, so the curtains were open, giving me a view of, it, of a rose of cherry trees bathed in the clean light of a morning sun, and a window into my of my own dorm room. The curtains were closed. It means you couldn't have seen a shapeshifter in the glass. Guess I'll take another look around. Look at that dress. If I saw some of my gut feeling that something is enough to be found in this room, then perhaps it lies in a ripped dress. Run a hand from my ponytail, then. Sort of for a dumb my work at a barmy's room. That was close. My first trip to a dormer's room had been in vain, so I used my lunch break to try again. I was about to turn it into a rag, tea towels, more precisely. Dormer work at a is the type of person who feels guilty about throwing anything away. So because she wouldn't have just done to dress just yet, but it's about to be recycled. I'd come to the aquarium to talk to a fish. I got there just in time to start with dress on being repurposed and secured it as evidence now sitting in my room. Gazing at the fish as they swim around aimlessly at the tank, I tried to calm myself and, and sort through the information. I discovered how it was torn. When I first heard what had happened, I'd assumed the dress had been ripped to shreds. However, upon actually examining it, it had been torn in one straight line down from the collar. I would have fit with Surikon's favour of a girl who grabbed it and in panic as she fell. And during the second inspection, I caught sight of a small cut of a torn collar. But it clearly been made with some kind of blade, probably scissors. It's like a mark saying, cut here. I mentally shuffle through all the bits of information. The shapeshifter of a dorm is the apparition that's been appearing in the textiles room. The student who sliced a palm on a pair of dressmaking shears. The ripped dress. A victim is still too upset to leave a room. To solve a mystery, you generally need the following. A crime, a suspect, and a motive. Motive? Yeah, we need to find the why done it. We know the... Crime. We kind of know who did it. But we don't know why done it. Suddenly we're not looking at Jonathan Creek anymore. We're looking at my case files as well in a lower second. I finally realised what had been nagging me. The one thing I completely overlooked. Moving closer to the aquarium, I stared at my plants away from rafting gently in the water as I scrutinised the possibilities. I was on thinking when he flipped the light switch because the light of a tank suddenly goes out. I see my own white face and its western features reflected weakly in my glass. I have all the necessary pieces of a puzzle. It's time to unravel what we know step by step. First, a girl injured on her hand and a pile of dressmaking shears. The victim, Subuki Kun. She wasn't attacked, we know that for certain. There's literally no way she could have been attacked in that room because the room was locked. The attacker could not have escaped from the room, so we can rule that one out. Got into an accident is the convenient truth. She got into an accident, she fainted, she saw herself, fainted tore the dress and cut her hands on the dressmaking shears as she fell. Now that makes perfect sense until we remember the other cut on the dress. Why is there a cut in the dress rather than just a tear in the dress? As if she cut it first And then fell and tore it. Honestly, I think she's lying. It's bad to throw an accusation like that, but I honestly, I do think she's lying. Because the other thing which reminds me about this, if you remember back a few episodes back, when we were talking to, um, 
I think it was one of the twins. I think it was probably. Um, Here you go. We were talking about all the new students and how the three of them, the four new students weren't there, three of them became a a trio. And it was like a love rivalry going on there. Uh, a, a love triangle. I'm going to go with that. That's right. Made of a puzzle piece like this, we can start to see the whole picture. Next up, a question of why the dress was ripped. Let's do some reason for information. Why is the dress torn? That is again the convenient truth. But the shapeshift is not real. There's no ghost. And that's what she wants us to think. That's literally what I just said. She was angry she wanted to be finished in time. That doesn't make sense with that extra cut I mentioned earlier. If it was just clean torn, that would be the option. But it was a cut already, an incision. It's like when you get a packet of sugar or some kind of thing sealed up in a little packet and it has a little tiny little nick at the corner of it so it says tear here. It makes it easier to tear from that point. You wouldn't do that if it was just an accident. So that's it, huh? Let's add an internal side of the conclusion I've reached. I see the consistency is a virtue, but they desire change. Should have taken this into account earlier, but it's his birthday today. We're planning on waiting in your classes were over to celebrate and inviting her over to my room after dinner, but guess I better deal with this first, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. I made up my mind internally, my expression and flexing my glass twists into a cynical smile. An obvious attempt to convince myself. You're kidding me. Kidding me about what? The end of the episode? Because you know I'm not kidding you, I'm ending it here. Bye bye.